See, a lot of times we hear that over and over again, that we aren't slaves anymore, but we still live like it. Amen? We still live like we're slaves. We still live like we're in bondage. We still live like we're in chains. We go back to the same things over and over and over again. And we keep failing as if we're slaves. But this morning, Christ has set us free. But do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you live it? Do you live it as if Christ has set you free? Amen. We are no longer slaves to fear. No longer slaves to sin. No longer slaves to anyone. Amen. And I'm talking about in regards to sin. 
right? You got the Christian that says, God knows my heart, he forgives me, right? You got that Christian. God knows my heart, he forgives me. And then there's the other Christian that says, they understand their relationship with the Father, and that says, I'm no longer a slave to sin. God has empowered me to be victorious. Amen. There's a different mindset on two different people because we're going to talk about what is their outlook at. One loves God for what God does for them. And another one knows God listen, and wants to do what God desires. When Jesus said, I come not to do my will, but the will of the Father, right? Amen. And he said, even as the Father has sent me in John 20 and 21, I go and I send you. Mm -hmm. And if we think of Jesus on the cross, I'm going to get into the message, compassion fatigue. Jesus on the cross, in the midst of them torturing him, he's suffering and he's going through it. And he says, Father, forgive me, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Now, not only did they whip him, they gave him a bowl of vinegar, they gave him vinegar to drink while he's going through the suffering. They spit it on him. Mary is at the foot, his mom is at the foot of the cross, looking at her son, whipped, dragged. And I would say, what mother in here could just give their son up to be sacrificed? Mm -hmm. Can any mother in here do that with, 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 with a son? But just imagine that scenario set up that God the Father says, this is my desire. Mm -hmm. See, because if you see it from that angle, what we think about God changes. See, because it says it, it pleased the Father to bruise him. That's not right. Mm -hmm. What father would be okay with their son being stoned? Mm -hmm. yeah. What father would be okay with their son being tortured? Mm -hmm. See, if you look at it from that angle, it changes your vision of what God is and who he is. Because one thing Jesus knew, he is God, but what he knew about his father is that one day, one day, eternity, right? And this matters not. None of this don't matter. And one thing he tried to instill for three years into the disciples is that this don't matter. This is why he didn't care about going through what he went through, because this does not matter. You know, I remember uh, there was a service, I forget who it was, but they had a strength. <laughs> Remember that string? And the string was, they showed, it was Sean, Sean, um, and it was eternity, and then it was like a small segment of our life was like this, and then the string was long, and just like compare that to eternity. I mean, I remember that, and I was thinking to myself, like sometimes we lose sight. And how many of us would be upset if Jesus came tomorrow? Or later on today, because we got plans for next week. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? We, we, would lose, we would be mad and upset that he came, but we not understanding that the spirit within us, and we the church, we should be ready for him to come, and we should want him to come. Amen. Because we understand that the earth is not our home, and it's not where we belong. Amen. Nothing within us should agree with this life. Mm. Really, it should. You know, and, and, and the only thing you should love, I guess, if you take the mindset of Paul, he said, I want to go. It's expedient, but, but it's expedient that I stay and then I establish the church, but everything within me is ready to go. You know, and within the child of God, we go through different things in life, but when we truly love the Father, we understand that this world is evil. You know, and when, and when you have the mindset of the Father, when you understand your relationship, that you are, in fact, a son, a child, a daughter of the Most High God, and that eternity rests in you, there should be a great compassion to make, to make a difference and then be out. Amen. You know, I'm here for a second, and then I'm gone. And, and, and understanding that on a daily basis, I know sometimes we all lose sight. We lose sight because of the cares of this world and the things of this life. But the thing is, that's why it says, the Bible talks about how if you love the world, if you love the world, if you love the world, then you can't love him. And so sometimes we get attached to things and we look forward to things and things catch us up. But you know, all those things, I believe, are distractions, not just distractions, but points of the enemy to, to get us all focused. See, because the thing is, God has called many of 
what happens is we get distracted so much that some of us won't even fulfill a, a portion of it until later on in life. We always, tomorrow I'll do it, tomorrow I'll do it. Or we get compassion fatigue when things don't go the way we want them to go. They're a little rough sometimes. Then we say, maybe God didn't call me to do this particular thing. Or maybe if I share the gospel with somebody and they don't receive it, well, then I did my just do. And I wipe my feet and I say, well, they didn't receive it. But I'm going to say, what child, I'm just using this, it's for mothers out here, what child ever, you know, you tell them an instruction one time, they ain't going to listen, and that was it. Did that ever happen? <laughs> that was it. You just tell them, oh, I'm giving you instruction, and you never had to, to say it again. That's not realistic, right? Mothers, fathers, baby, it might be a little different, but I would say the same thing. Because children will constantly, you got to redirect them. That's why the Bible says train the child in a way that they should go. There's constant redirection. Even with those unsaved around us, we're going to need some constant redirection. When I say redirection, not that we're the parent, but we have an obligation as children, as sons and daughters of the Most High, to share the gospel. To have the, the, the passion that our Father has. Because the reason that Jesus came, the reason why he even stepped on earth, was because of the Father. This is why he said, that is not my will, but thy will be done. Amen, amen, amen. Great job. First Timothy 2, 3 and 4 says, it talks about how God wants all men to be saved. Amen. God wants all men to be saved. How many have, look at your rope, look at your rope. What if God said, look, in a week, I want that rope filled by you. <laughs> Can we do it? Could we do it? That's the question. Could, could we do it? Could we do it? Look at your rope. And, and God say to you, in a week, I, I, I need you to fill this. Could you do it? That's the question. I need some response. I want some response. Could it be done? God said it. God said it. Definitely. Pastor says definitely. I don't hear anybody else say it. I just got here again. How about anybody? Could, God, could it be done? That's the question. Could it be done? Some people saying yes. But I'm saying that with assurance. Yes, it could be done. We know that it can be done. We know that it can be done. The question is, what would it take for you to have that compassion to say, you know what, there's some people that I know out there, I can get them I bet you if, if, if you know, for you women, I don't know, I'm going to say something to go out on the limb. There was a hair stone or, 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 or some kind of shoe thing that you got on the I bet you you can get people there, right? No, or, or guys in the Super Bowl coming up, we say a Super Bowl party or, or something, we can find a way to, to, to make those things attracted to people and, and, and get them to where we want to, if it's a party or something, we know how to make it attractive. But for whatever reason, you got to understand that when people are uh, attracted to what is exciting to a person. So a lot of times what happens with, with us questions, sometimes we allow things in our life to affect us so much that Christ is not attracted to, to the people around us. They may see a difference in our life. But he's not attractive because you know what? Praise God, only you know what I would have did. <laughs> you know. You know, sometimes or oh, different things we go through, we allow those things to overtake us. And so that light is not shining as bright. The Bible says that a house on the hill cannot be hidden. Amen. And so I would say that we are the salt of the earth. We are the light in the midst of darkness. That's who we are. We are, in fact, children of the most high God. Of the most high God. And I think understanding that I'm no longer taking uh, verses from the song, a slave to fear. Anybody ever been mad on my fear? Anxiety? Ever been afraid? Like, what if I mess up? Or what if it, whatever I'm doing just don't work out? The thing about a child of God is that we will be continuously tested through our faith. Because the Bible says that the, the testing of your faith works. Patience, mm -hmm. patience, hope, and, and, and all of these different characteristics and virtues of God. And so we have to go through trials and we have to go through tests. And a lot of us don't like tests. Have anybody like tests? <laughs> Most of us don't like tests. But those things are important for a child of God. 
Those things are important for, for, for us to go through. But the most important thing is to understand that this life is very, very temporary. Mm -hmm. It rhymes, right? Very, very temporary. <laughs> because it rhymes, if you remember that. Very, very temporary. <laughs> this life is very, very temporary. It is, it is crazy because uh, just this week I found out, uh, you know, I'm a therapist, but I found out one of the guys that I used to, uh, one of my clients, he, he died. He, he was shot, 23. Mm. And uh, I thought about it. I thought about the last time I saw him. And, uh, and I mean, I appreciate the gospel with him, but I was like, man, I, I don't know if he was saying maybe I should have been a little bit more, you know? Because just when you think it's all over, you don't have any more time. You know, like, you can do so much, but you cannot, like, do enough. And I thought about it like, hey, did I do enough? Because what I'm thinking, in my mind, I'm like, wow, if he went to hell, he can't get out. You, you got to understand, it's over. Once that, once your heart stops, it's over. It's no more chance. It's so, like, we think, I don't know, I don't think we think about it too much. But I know, like, when, when death happens, whether it be in my family or somebody, I know I think about that. You know, and then I think about myself, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I, I think about their salvation because this is very temporary. To me, eternity is, is very real. You know, it's very real, although I haven't been there. And that's the reason why it's not as real to us, because we haven't experienced it, right? That's why I, I believe most of us, it's like, you haven't been there, you haven't seen it, so why is it so real? But it's the same way for me, for God. You guys are coming here each week. I, I would say it's because you believe God is real, right? So although you, you don't see him, you know him, and although you don't see him, you experience him. And it's the same way you know, just as much as God is real, that eternity is just as real. Amen. And you know, all of us have lost somebody because death is a part of life. Amen. You know, I'm just going to say that compassion fatigue comes from a lot of trauma, right? And what trauma does, trauma, uh, if you ever been through any traumatic event in your life, you, we don't like to feel trauma because it causes pain, right? And so what we do, we would rather numb ourselves to, to any kind of pain. So what happens is we generally, even in, even in Christ, you can have trauma. Anybody ever said something happened to you and you blame God and you feel like God didn't make you aware or change the situation or it's unfair that you're in the situation because of your relationship with God? Anybody ever felt like that? I need to show hands. I, I want to see. Well, otherwise, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> no, 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 it's a couple people. Not really. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> listen to me. No, but li listen to me. And your journey in Christ, you will experience some, some things in your life, especially if you're a brave person. Because let me tell you something about a brave person. The devil hates you, right? And just like Job, Job went through some trauma. I don't want to go through Job's life. But I'm just saying, because he was upright before God, he went through some stuff. Just like Paul was upright before God, he went through some stuff. Jesus, he went through some stuff. And anybody that loves God will go through some stuff. Can anybody attest that they love God first? Yeah. Anybody? Okay. Can anybody attest that they went through some stuff? Yeah. Whatever this stuff was, you went through some stuff. Yeah. To go on through trials, to go on through tribulation, we understand that God is with us, right? Amen. We know that He's with us. And what God wants us to do is take that testimony that we generate through our trials and share that story with somebody else. And I'm going to tell you that when, I, when a lot of times when, when I'm out or when I'm at work in, in situations, the biggest thing that I have in sharing the price <laughs> with, with people is my testimony. You know, you guys have heard it before, parts of it anyway. And, I, and it never gets old to me because God is always doing something. Mm -hmm. And so just the same way that I share with you uh, about the God that, that, that I met, that happened this week. And so things happen on a regular basis that always make me think about, you know, think about God, eternity, and, and life, and other people. And it's like everything is related to that. Why? Because I am a child of God. And so I think about the work that I do, and sometimes I, I, I know I don't do enough, right? Don't think because I'm out there, I'm always thinking about God and hallelujah. No, I'm just like everybody else. I can get caught up. But when I get caught up, I got to find myself in a place of repentance and say, God, you know what? Please get me to where I need to be. Because if, 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 
I'm too caught up that I'm not affected and I'm not winning some. Amen. And if I'm not winning some, then I'm not sharing the compassion that my father, my father had. Because God is compassionate. How many know that? Amen. How many know that he saw you in, 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 in a wretched state? Amen. You know, I know I was a wretch. There's an old, old song that says I was a wretch living in the wilderness and stuff like that. You know, Lord. But that's when I look at my life, that's what it was. It was turmoil, it was pain, and I knew the devil had his grip. You know, so when, when I go back, I uh, think about the song, I'm no longer a slave to sin. It empowers me because I understand who I am, but because of to whom I belong. Amen. I'm a child of God. Like, that's basic. You know, and, and, and because of that, I want to see other people know that. Because it's one thing to be in the world, but this world has a lot of hopelessness in this world. There's a lot more people in this world. We have greater technology, but there's more people that are suicidal. There's more people that are taking diagnosis of depression and bipolar and all these different things and going through things in life, and they are lost. And we have a message of hope. And I'll tell you, uh, as a therapist, to, to be honest with you, I think the answer to everything is Jesus. Amen. Uh, you know, I, like, for real, like, I went to school. I went to school and I learned how to help people, but the truth is, the only really thing I can give them is Jesus. Amen. You know, and I feel like whatever he gives me, because, like, the, the biggest part about being this therapist is, like, you can you get compassion to you. You can hear so many stories, just like I was telling you that. And nothing affects you anymore. So you become, you can't be empathetic. Like, you can't put yourself in a person's shoes. You're just like, that's you. I'm not taking that home with me. I hear you. Just keep on talking. <laughs> you know? And it can still help somebody, but, but it helps to, to have the heart of the person. And what I'm saying is, as a person, we should have the heart of other people on the inside of us. And we should be able to feel, because of the love of God is so radiant within us, we should be able to have that compassion and meet some needs in the people around us. When you meet needs, man, you become an oracle or a mouthpiece to share Amen. the truth of the gospel Amen. and be able to, to draw them because they want what you have. They want what you have because there's something different and because you care. That's the biggest part. Because who in this world cares? Like, you know, a lot of people feel like no one cares. But do we care? Amen. And if we don't care, we got to repent. We got to care it. Because God is love. And in Him is no darkness at all, but in us is love because we're, we're made in His image. So can somebody turn around or tell the person next to you, they're awesome. Do you love them? They're awesome and I love them too. Yeah. Now, I love you, Jose. I love you, brother. I love you, cancer. You're awesome, man. Love you, I ask for everybody. Love everybody here.
You know, in, in the same instance, how pitiful it would be for me to miss heaven. How pitiful for me. I, mean, I would believe everybody in this room we come to church every week. You better make it. Right? I hope you feel I, I don't know how you think, but that's how I think. I'm not gonna waste my time on something that I really, you know, I need this, right? So because I need this, I understand that the world needs this Christ, this Jesus that, that empowers me from day to day, that empowers me, and I can say it. You know, and I know that some people that I know that, that are in sin, that are in drugs and alcohol, caught up in, in sex and, and, and uh, all kind of addictions and uh, just life is in turmoil. Well, sometimes life is so good they, they don't need God, even them. Listen, if they die in that state, they're going to hell too. It's, you know, hell is, is equal opportunity uh, <laughs> uh, and glory. And, and most of the world, I remember I heard a statistic that said um, only 1% of the world would be saved. 1%. That's like out of a billion people. Like, what is that? That's crazy. I, I, do y'all believe that? You don't, you don't want to believe that? You want to believe more? I, I would want to believe more too, but the truth is when you look at it compared to what God says, you can believe it. And what I'm saying is, is that we, we're the, we're the oracles, we're the mouthpieces. If we don't do the work, the work won't get done. You know, the work won't get done and the only way we can do it is as a body. That's why the Bible, the Bible says the body and the bride. We are the body and we are the bride of Christ. And this for us to, to share the passion of the Father on in the earth. Because the only way Jesus gets prayer, the only way people are delivered, the only way people are set free is through us. And if it's not done through us in this neighborhood, then this neighborhood has no hope. And that's just crazy. You know what I mean? So I'm going to say, as, as, as a family, let's do this. Right? Right? No longer slave. Right? We can do this. When you tell me I can do it, and you tell me I can do it, and you tell me I can do it, I believe I can do it. And what I'm saying is that encouragement from other people sometimes will empower us. Knowing who we are is one thing, but encouragement also does a whole other thing. And, and if we can do that with each other and stand as a team, it will get done, I promise you. This church will be full. And if you, if you in your heart, you, you believe, man, you know what? This neighborhood can, can make it to this church. We can get a baby. We can do it. I know we can do it. We got some awesome people here. We can do this thing right here. And you know what? Some of you guys, you are the best. Some of us don't know our potential because we haven't tested it. We haven't tried it, but we gotta get out there and we gotta try it. You know, because can you, can, can you, even myself, I, you know, plenty of work to do. But we gotta get out there and we gotta talk to some people. We gotta tell them our Father loves them, and they are awesome, and we love them. You know, show them what, what, what Christ is in here. But I'm getting ready to go. But I want to say, I want to say something to you guys. I know within my own self that I'm not worthy of, of the love that God has for me. I'm not worthy. Of I know that I've fallen short enough so many times that I constantly. You know, gotta repent and say, God, make me over again, make me new, renew me, and all of those things. And the reason why I'm saying that is because one of the number one reasons that people don't share Christ with others is because they look at their own self and they say, Well, what can I say because I've messed up? That is the reason why we can tell the earth that God loves them. Because He has so many times and times again forgave us despite who we were. And because we understand that we were bastards and he brought us in. That's what we was. Because we was not the, the Israelites. But he brought us in and he brought us into his family. And he told us individually that he loved us. And God has told me individually that he loved me. And because he told me that he loved me, God Almighty has let me know that he loves me. I can tell that. That's why. It's not about what I know. The only, the only thing that's important about my knowledge is this. Is that he loved me. So I know because he loved me. I know that he loves you. Because I wasn't worthy. So to that other person that feels unworthy, that feels unloved and feel like this, you know, because we all just searching for love, really. That's what it is. Every man and woman is searching for love. I may know that. That's right. The need that they have. You have the very need that they have. You have it. We have the answer. Let's give it to you. 
And I'm 